Hey, hey it's TDA and welcome back to Satisfactory. Last time around we completed our fuel, plastics and rubber setup. And to be honest now we kind of have a problem. Because we are producing these huge amounts of plastic and rubber over here along with some fuel. And honestly we are also producing a huge amount of silicon based items over here. Um, but we have no way of actually getting that to our central storage all the way over here. So what I want to do is kind of make sure we don't have to go back and forth every time we need some rubber, plastic or silica. So we are going to need to expand our bus system. Now, I've not actually have done this so far. So, um, <laughs> I mean, we have a pretty nice bus going over here in this area. But if you just look at the distances, this is going to be a bus on a whole next level. So let's try and figure out how we want to do this. Okay, so here we are. We have our previous bus uh, up and running. And to be honest, it kind of looks really cool with these mini buses going underneath. This huge bus going all the way to this other side as well. And honestly, I initially was thinking that we should be expanding into this direction. Because there's a whole lot of open space here. A lot of resources. And we are probably definitely going to do that at some point. But before we do that, I actually want to make use of all these remaining resources that we have in our starting area if i don't do it now i'm probably never going to do it uh, there's a lot of coal actually over here there's some sulfur so uh, i think our next facility should be um, small enough to be able to draw off these um, normal and i think there's some impure notes and stuff like that oh yeah by the way we can actually see the purity again on the map thank you developers um as you might have noticed that we are actually now on the main build so no longer on the um, experimental build because we have all the pretty awesome stuff from update 6 in the game now. Um, but anyway, yeah. So I want to build the next factory somewhere over here. And that next factory is supposedly going to solve all my problems in terms of all the, the stuff I haven't actually automated yet. So um, that goes for items like the... Um, heavy modular frames we also need the two items that we need for phase three um basically there is a ton of items that we don't have automated yet like computers and uh, engines uh, or whatever, whatever they're called uh, motors that's what the world i was looking for so i want to do all of that in one build i probably should have done that a long time ago but anyway that's the next target in order to do that, we are going to also use some alternative recipes. And because of that, we are going to need plastics and rubber all the way over there. And right now, it's pretty much on the other side of the map. So, um, yeah, bus is definitely going to be needed here. Now, first things first, uh, that means I need a kind of bi-directional bus in some sort of way. Right now, the bus is flowing from my starting position all the way like so. And uh, we will need to be able to go in both directions. Now that's actually pretty straightforward because I I'm only using a few belts. I have a total of seven belt belts underneath here. Three on each side and one down the middle. The one down the middle is the uh, belt going to the main storage. So we can't reverse that one. Um, but all in all we're only using two or three of these side belts. So we could easily uh, flip those around. If you're following my design of bus, that's pretty easy to expand actually. So we just take a glass frame foundation uh, and expand it like this. And I really recommend that initially you just take the central line and expand that in whatever direction you want to go. Uh, kind of figure out where the, the main bus is going to go before you actually start building it. So for example, over here, if I build it in a straight direction over here, uh, we're going to kind of collide with this cliff. Uh, that means that I probably want to move this main line a few uh, blocks to the side. So we can kind of take advantage of this natural path that is over here. Now, when you're building a bus, I recommend that you uh, stick to straight lines wherever possible. However, you will probably have some places where you go into a diagonal direction. And to be honest, that's pretty straightforward. You can just do it like this. And then you have a 45 degree angle. Now that will make the corners a little messy. Um, it's not the worst thing in the world, to be honest. Um, but if that's something that really annoys you, then you could always, of course, stick to straight corners. That does look a lot more clean. Uh, it's just a lot more work to do. Um, well, not to be honest, not that much more work to do, but it is definitely more work. Anyway, um, let me build a few lines and show you what it looks like. 
And here we are at our silicon production facility. So I expanded with a single line, just like I just said, to kind of figure out how I want my bus to flow with the natural terrain. The awesome thing about doing this is that we have no issues with all these critters on the ground because we are way above them. Uh, the spitters every now and then do try to shoot at you and, and if they get very lucky they can actually hit you. But generally speaking you shouldn't have any problem expanding like this in uh, a peaceful manner. Now don't worry about the trees and stuff like that. We'll actually clear those out once we have the bus where we want it to go. But this is just... Um, just an example of how you can expand very easily now of course we don't want a single line we'll need a um, line of uh, three width but uh, that's very easy to do once you have the basic layout up and running now these corners once again can be a little bit messy uh, but i wouldn't worry about that too much of course if you do go in straight corners you will kind of be, a, be zigzagging around especially in a direction like this once again, I don't really recommend that, but it's completely up to you. Kind of looks cool, doesn't it? This whole bus in between those trees. Now, we're probably going to have to clear out a couple of these trees because we don't want them sticking through our bus. But we're going to do that as soon as we are sure that it's going to be staying in that place. Now, working with all these elevations and things like that is a little bit tricky, but it's not too bad as long as... Um, yeah, you're not too obsessed about making it look entirely perfect. Uh, once again, this kind of annoys me when I look at it right now. But this is the, probably the last time we're going to ever look at this from a um, close distance. And if you're on the ground or you're just working around, this is not something you're going to ever notice once again. So I wouldn't stress about that too much. Uh, gaps like these you can probably uh, easily fill in either by placing another foundation over it. Now that will mean you will have kind of these things sticking out here and there. If that annoys you, you can always um, use these crosswalks or um, yeah. And these are pretty small, kind of fit in here nicely. Not that one. Um, and you can kind of fill in the gap like that. Um, and it looks pretty uh, nice and tidy. For the second branch of our bus, we are going to take the touristic route. Uh, is that a thing in English? I don't know. But anyway, this is kind of going all the way around. I had two choices. Well, I had multiple choices. But um, the more direct route would have been kind of to um, zigzag around the beach and do it like that. Uh, the problem with that is that we have a couple of very awesome notes over here. All pure notes that I definitely want to use at some point. And I didn't want my bus to get in the way of... Um, connecting to all those resources so by going around we can actually easily get it on the bus if that's what we want to do or rather than building where the nodes are um, and we don't have to work all the way through these areas over here where there's trees there's rocks etc getting in the way it's going to be pretty straightforward doing it like this and on the plus side it looks kind of awesome as well so of course right now our bus is completely floating in the air. It will definitely not stay like that. I do like a realistic approach to kind of laying out my buildings. So similarly to what we've done over there, we are going to support this. But once again, I only will do that once I actually know for sure that the bus is where it's going to be staying. Now remember, if you're going with a belt bus, then you're going to need a gap every six um, foundations. So every seven foundation should be a gap to be precise and why is that because that's the maximum distance you can actually draw a belt so once again if you look over there we have a kind of platform every sixth or seventh depending on how you count a plat um, foundation because otherwise we won't be able to support our belts now let's start building some belts so i work deep into the night to complete the first section of our bus and it looks very very awesome uh, we have a section of belts going to the storage facility we have a section of belts going away from the storage facility so there's the whole bi-directional thing happening we also have of course the main line going towards our central storage there is just one problem with this this is just the first section and i still need to complete like uh the other 85 percent or more and I'm starting to doubt a little whether or not this is what we want to do. I really think this looks very, very awesome. So in terms of the end result, I'm definitely in favor of this. Um, 
But, and to be honest, that is in line with a couple, what a couple of you were telling me in the comments before when I started to doubt the use of trains and trucks and stuff like that. Um, just looking at the distance we still have to cover. I mean, we're right over here. Uh, I already spent, I don't know how much time, but too much time on these first few belt sections. We need to go all the way over here and over here. So I don't think this is going to work in terms of time spent. Considering this channel is supposed to be about optimizing gameplay rather than brute forcing it, I definitely couldn't go ahead and keep building those belts. I mean, they looked awesome, so you could argue it's optimizing the looks of it, uh, but I went with plan B. And plan B is going to be trucks. This is actually really straightforward. So, um, how about this? We have a loading station on one side of this bus. So we have a unloading station on the other side. We don't currently need that, but hey, uh, I like my symmetry builds. We also have kind of these uh, ramps on the sides where the truck can go down and it can turn around and go back up. And the reason I've built it like that is if we ever want to expand this bus like in this direction, then we can have our... Um, throughput lanes, kind of our driving lanes, um, the three of them going straight on, and any truck on or off boarding this, um, or at least turning around here, can actually do so. So we can actually have trucks driving around in circles without obstructing the flow of the other trucks that might be moving in that direction. I'm saying trucks because I currently don't have trains, um, so we can see if we can actually make trucks happen. Now the awesome thing about trucks is that we can actually implement that a lot earlier in the game as well. So instead of actually working with the belts like we've done until this point, you can actually work with trucks instead. Um, when I say trucks, of course, you have the two different types. So um, right now I'm actually, um, when I'm talking about trucks, I actually do mean trucks. So these, these are kind of the larger vehicles, but of course way earlier you already have tractors. Uh, which kind of serve the same purpose, but they are a lot smaller. They have only half the inventory of a normal truck. Although that doesn't really matter because they're so fast. Uh, it's very unlikely you're going to be transporting more than what a tractor can carry. Now, that said, um, there's a few problems with this as well. So, well, at least not problems, but we actually need to set up the, uh, the truck grinds. Uh, I also built the actual supports. Kind of looks awesome. Um... And, of course, we need to make sure everything is powered. So, right now, I don't think... Nope, I haven't actually powered this. So, this is not going anywhere. And this is just the sending station. But we also need some sort of receiving station at our central storage. And that receiving station could look something like this. Now, the actual pillars don't serve any purpose other than looking pretty awesome. I kind of like the looks of this. Um, the actual receiving station itself only has one functional unloading... Um, station at the moment the other three are the, just there because i might need them in the future to kind of like unload or offload um once again i'm trying to build this kind of thinking ahead so i don't have to completely redo my build later on um there's just a few things that i haven't done yet so we currently don't have any type of hypertube system and i'm getting really 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 tired of having to walk back and forth to these locations especially the oil we don't really need to go here at all we don't there's not that much going on so as soon as we have actually automated the uh, the supply line over here i don't see a very large need to get back there uh, but we definitely need to go in this direction and later on we, we are going to be expanding towards the north so we will definitely need some sort of hypertube station in that direction um, now, just to show you how this is actually working, we have this layer underneath uh, where we have a setup and apparently still a tree over there. Um, the unloading station splits the fuel that it's going to be collecting to the side. So we actually have a fuel input so we can make sure our trucks keep running. Um, and the way we will want to do that is set this to a package fuel and then set the center to overflow. So that any fuel that we don't need is actually being put on the belt as well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to connect this um, splitter, the overflow, up to this exit over here. And as you can see, I already set up the merger over there. So any surplus items will be going onto the main belt into the storage facility. Now, uh, we're also going to need some room for the hypertube. So let me fiddle around with that to see how we are actually going to do that. 
and that should look something like this. So what I've done over here is made a bi-directional hypertube cannon type of thing. Now the reason I actually turned our hypertube into a cannon now where I didn't do that before is because we have much larger distances to cover. Uh, this will make sure we exit and enter these little mini tunnels over here which will definitely spit us up a lot faster than if you do just do a single entrance. And depending on how far you need to go between sections, that should probably determine how many of these you need. Now, once again, I don't uh, recommend do going for the complete overkill if you don't need it. And I'll just demonstrate how fast this is. It gets a little glitchy, but as you can see, the, we are now traveling at a pretty decent speed. And you might also notice that we now have the hypertube on top of the belt or bus rather than under it. I'm not entirely sure if we can still call it a bus right now, but that's that's definitely what I'm going to call it because at least it serves the function of a bus. Um, the reason I put it down in the middle is because that makes it very easy for me to remember on which side of this bus my truck should be driving because I want to have a right hand side driving lane on um, the import and export. So, that means the trucks can easily pass each other. We should not have trucks colliding. We might as well have a tube in the middle to make sure those trucks stay on each side. Uh, it's also a lot easier to build the hypertube like this. So that was definitely one of my considerations for doing this. Because doing it underneath will actually um, require you to um, break up the actual bus a couple of times. Like every tenth, I think, um, foundation. And that is not necessarily something I would like to do. Now you notice, of course, in the corner over there as well, that I actually raised the hypertube. And we need to do that for the simple reason of, whoosh, that was really fast, um, that the trucks going from the silica to the storage, as well as the trucks going from the oil to the storage, will be crossing each other there. There's just one problem with this current hypertube system, is that we crash into the floor over here, and then we take some damage. Now you will also always survive the damage if you're on full health um, but putting a cush cushion or one of those jelly pads beneath this is probably going to be needed at some point because I'm going to forget that I can't enter my hypertube if I'm not on full health now there's a couple of other things that I also did so um, right now it went really fast the first time we passed it so the hypertube is going underneath here as well and the hypertube here is once again connected to a uh, kind of a cannon and once again you need this cannon to be bi-directional because if you just do it in one direction you can only enter the hypertube from one direction and you can't actually use it to travel back so hence the double entries um yeah that's pretty much it now we just need some trucks and there the trucks go well, well at least singular truck goes we now completed a full route of trucks that will actually um, go from one side to the other. And I also encountered a few problems with these trucks. The first problem, although it's very easy to fix it, is that any of these truck stations that your trucks pass will automatically include a stop at that station. And if the station is actually not powered, like this one currently is not, uh, your trucks will actually just keep waiting there forever, it seems, before they continue to move on. Now, the uh, easy way to fix that is just to uh, get close, edit the note that you can see, like the, the stop sign over there. Just remove it and your truck will continue to move through your route. Now, the second problem with this uh, truck thing is that even though I had a pretty decent ramp over here, the trucks are kind of struggling with the uh, the angle. So these are the type of ramps that go down four meters per foundation. Um, and that doesn't really work that well. As you can see, the truck does actually get about halfway. Um, but if you have too many sections in your ramp, it will at some point start to slow down, it will back off. Now the awesome thing is um, that the developers actually thought about that. And if your truck for whatever reason gets stuck, after a little while it will actually get a boost of some sort. And it will actually boost itself all the way up in this case. So that is kind of a hack to work around that. There you go, you can see it gets a boost. That's just enough to bring it all the way up the ramp and continue on its path. 
But that's definitely something to take into consideration when you're building something like this. So either make your ramps less steep or um, yeah, just don't use those steep ramps at all, but work around it in some different way. Now it does work and it's really satisfying to see your trucks driving around. It, it kind of brings the world to life a little bit more than it would otherwise. Um, but I can definitely see an argument forming here for trains that I haven't actually used yet, but mm, maybe somewhere over the next few episodes. Okay guys, so I completed both the routes for the trucks. We now have one truck station receiving the uh, plastics, rubbers and fuel. We have another station accepting the uh, silicon based items and it's a time to give some of you what you were waiting for and that is um, you are right and I was wrong about the whole why would you ever need trains or trucks when you can do everything with belts um yeah I really underestimate the amount of work that goes into making a bus like this across long distances to be honest I also underestimated how long it takes to set up a truck line like that now that's partially because I simply didn't have enough experience yet with trucks um, so a couple of my ramps were actually too steep. Um, for some reason this truck seems to have, be having some difficulties with the angle of the corner over here as well. Although it does fix itself so it's not the biggest deal in the world. Um, so I had to kind of redesign a couple of my ramps. I had a few ramps over here that were really steep so I had to kind of um, make um, horiz horizontal parts in that to kind of break the angle. Um, but all in all, the trucks do work and they work pretty well. So if you build your ramp the first time around with trucks in mind, unlike what I did, um, it does actually work very well. So short version of that, um, things like belts for a bus work very well on short distances. In medium distances or long distances, trucks or tractors or whatever are definitely the way to go. Um, but honestly, I think we'll be replacing everything with trains as soon as we unlock that. Now, despite the length of this episode, this took me a very, very long time to build. Mainly because I, once again, was doing it for the first time. I hope you found some use out of it. You can laugh at me at the amount of time I spent on making an extension of our bus. In the next episode, we are once again going to be building one of our larger builds because I am aching to get some progress here because I've been staring at this complete phase three thing for hours and hours and hours now and we really need to get that done. So thank you for joining me. If you're still here, you're awesome. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so and I will catch you in the next one.